Hi, welcome to Bernina Creative Studio. I'm educator Haley Grish, and today I have a really fun little mini quilt mug rug project for you. Um, the pattern that we're going to be stitching up is called the I Heart You Quilt. We'll be making one block from that pattern. Um, this is from Then Came June and is a pattern available through Brewer. Um, but mini quilts and mug rugs like this are some of my favorite projects to make because of two reasons, actually. One, it's a great opportunity to use up some of those orphaned quilt blocks you may have in your stash, that quilt that's just never gonna get done. You can put it to use by making a little mug rug. Um, and it's also a great opportunity to try out some new quilting techniques or a piecing technique that you're maybe not ready to commit to a full-sized quilt with. So this is a great little 16-inch finished block. Uh, the supplies that we're going to be using to make this today is obviously our fabric. I have all of my fabrics pre-cut out according to the pattern directions, um, but we also have some 505 spray, some Wonder Clips or straight pins depending on what you like to use. Uh, I've got my trusty thread snips, um, some thread for piecing, and my presser feet. So the machine that we're gonna be using to make this project today is the B475 Quilters Edition. This is a really great machine if you're somebody that just likes to piece or um, if you only really quilt smaller projects, um, or maybe you're somebody that has that 880 at home or that 790 and you need something that will uh, do everything you're used to but is a little bit easier to travel with for classes. Um, the great thing about this machine as a quilter is that it is BSR compatible. And we're gonna be using our burning a stitch regulator to quilt the project today. The other presser foot that we're going to be using is the number 37 patchwork foot. Um, this is a pretty standard, straightforward quarter inch presser foot. Uh, here at Bernina, we actually have three different patchwork feet for you to choose from. There's the 37. There's also the 57, which has a small guide on the right toe of the presser foot. Um, and then we have the number 97, which is actually designed for nine millimeter machines. That one has that handy quarter inch toe, but the base of the presser foot is actually a little bit wider, so you're gonna have better contact with those wider feed dogs. All three of those feet also come in a dual feed version. So we really have whatever kind of patchwork foot you're looking for, and it really all boils down to personal preference. On our 475, this is a five and a half millimeter machine, and because of that, I'm just gonna use the standard, really basic 37 foot. So the first step is going to be getting our patchwork together. Um, like I said, I have all of my pieces pre-cut to the sizes noted in the pattern, um, but just to kind of go through what prints we have, at the center of our block, I used a little um, a cute little panda print to be the focus in the heart. So I have two rectangles pre-cut for that. Um, I have two different sizes of strips of what I'm calling the bubble, like a text bubble kind of look. Um, fabric, so we have two different sizes of strips and three different sizes of squares of that fabric. And then I have three different sizes of strips for the background fabric and then some squares and a little rectangle for that. So we'll get to all of those later, but let's start in the center. This block is pieced from the middle out, so we're gonna start with the heart. So on your two rectangles of the center fabric, you're gonna take the small squares of the bubble fabric and align those to the corners of the heart print. So these are all gonna be sewn together in like a stitch and flip method. So we're gonna align these to the corners. I'm and going to take a pencil or a fabric marker and just draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other on the wrong side of this bubble fabric. So these are layered right sides together 
and we're going in opposite directions on each little rectangle because it'll make that little point kind of curve to look like the top of the heart. So I'm just gonna mark these really quick. And I'm also gonna throw a pin in each of those just to keep them in place till we go to the machine. So, like I said, these are gonna create the top kind of curves of our heart shape. So to create that bottom point, we're gonna take the two larger squares of the bubble fabric and do the same process. So I'm gonna lay those right sides together. And it's really easy to visualize it when you're pinning it all together and you have the pieces side by side like this. And then we'll go in opposite directions on each of these two. And again, I'll just throw a quick pin in. So with these all pinned together, we're gonna take it to the machine. All right, now that we're at our machine, all we're going to do is stitch these. So I have my number 37 foot attached. And to sew these together, I'm going to sew directly on the diagonal lines that I had just drawn. So. With my standard straight stitch, I'm, draw, I'm gonna sew right on those lines. And cut my thread and move on to the next one. So I'm gonna do the same thing on every single one of these lines, both of the heart pieces, and then we'll move on to uh, getting these stitched together. I'll just... All right, so we have the little heart pieces stitched together, and next what we're gonna do is cut away all of that excess fabric. So with a ruler and a rotary cutter, we're gonna trim down to a quarter inch seam allowance on, along every single one of those pieces. We just stitched. One. All right, now I'm going to press these seams open and I like to do that just because it helps reduce bulk, especially when you're working on something like this that has some really tiny pieces. These squares in the corners here, I think are like an inch and a half square. So when we have a lot of seams coming together like that, pressing open um, really helps reduce the bulk in the long run. So, just open up that seam by fingers and give it a good press. So now you can see we have one side of our heart. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. When you have all of these trimmed and pressed open, double check that this rectangle is still measuring three and a half by six and a half. If you've got any little wonky parts, just give it a square up, make sure those edges are nice and clean. 
Okay, so now I'm going to seam the two heart pieces right up the middle. Um, and while I'm doing that, I have prepped a few more pieces just to kind of chain piece while I'm here at the machine. So every other section of this pattern that requires that stitch and flip where we're aligning uh, squares to the corners, drawing a line, stitching it, um, I've prepped all of those ahead of time so I can sew a bunch of these parts all in one batch. So let's, uh, let's get stitching. All of these chain pieces. Now let's cut them apart and trim down. So with my pieces uh, kind of chain pieced together like this, I'm going to start by just separating them uh, using my little thread snips. And then we'll do what we did before with the heart. Uh, we don't need to trim that one down anymore, but these other pieces, um, we will cut away the excess trimming to a quarter inch seam allowance again. All right, and then again, we're going to press with the seams open here. Um, I'm gonna press my heart first opening that up and pressing out that center seam. Very cute. And then uh, I'm gonna press these other pieces and we'll talk about building out the rest of our block. Okay, so the rest of the block is gonna come together pretty easily and it's assembled kind of courthouse stepsy. So we have our center here. The next step is going to be adding our pieces on the side here of that bubble fabric. When those are stitched, then you'll add the kind of rounded edges that we had just chained piece to the top and bottom. Then um, we're gonna add the little point at the bottom of our speech bubble here. So to do that, you'll have to tack on, you'll stitch another small rectangle here, open it up, and then it'll get added onto the bottom here. And then we're just gonna add a really straightforward uh, border to the outside. So again, adding strips on the sides and then on the top and bottom. So go ahead and piece all of this together. It's like take you just a couple of minutes, um, press with your seams open, and then we'll come back and talk about quilting. So with your block all pieced and pressed nice and crisp, um, the next step is going to be putting together our quilt sandwich. So I'm gonna set the block aside for a minute and get my backing ready. Um, our block finishes at about 16 inches uh, square. So we wanna make sure that our backing is at least 18, 20 inches uh, in each direction. Mine's a bit bigger than that, better safe than sorry. So I'm gonna place that with the right side down on my table. And then I'm going to lay my back or my batting on top of that, kind of centering as best I can in the middle. And this, uh, because the block is 16 inches, I want at least about 17 inches. Um, just to make sure we've got batting under everything. And then I'm gonna spray a little uh, spray adhesive between those layers to hold them together. Um, if you're a pin baster, you can do that too. 
for little projects like this, I tend to just spray baste. It's, a, it's easier for me um, and quicker for something that's going to take me all of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to quilt. I'd spend as much time basting if I used pins. So lastly, we're going to place our block uh, on top of the batting and the backing, smoothing things out. And again, give it a little 505 to hold that together. Do your best not to stretch the fabric, but smooth it out so there's no, no weird bubbles in there. So our block is looking nice and smooth. I'm gonna double check the back. Lovely, nice and smooth. And now we can start quilting. All right, now to quilt our mini, uh, I'm going to be using the Bernina Stitch Regulator to do this. And I'm using this foot for a couple of reasons. One primarily is that um, Despite loving piecing, free motion quilting is not always uh, my strongest part of the process. And the BSR is going to make quilting a lot easier for me because it's one less thing for me to think about as I'm working through those different uh, free motion designs or fill motifs. It keeps my stitches looking good so that my attention can stay on the project. So to attach this foot, um, we're going to take off the patchwork foot and attach the BSR. Now, one thing that's unusual about this foot compared to any of our other presser feet is that it actually has to be plugged in. There's a little port on the back of the machine. And when you, you attach this foot, the machine screen is going to remind you to lower your feed dogs. You'll do by pressing the button on the right hand side. And now the stitch out screen looks a little bit different than it would if we were normally sewing. So the BSR has two different modes for stitching. Mode number one, which is the one we're gonna start with, uh, has the machine constantly stitching. So even if you stop moving your fabric under the needle, it's going to maintain a minimum stitching speed. Uh, this mode um, is, the default for a reason, it's a little bit easier if you've never used this foot before. Um, but between the two different modes, it really boils down to personal preference, like a lot of tools that we have to offer you guys. So starting in mode one, um, decide where you want to start quilting. Um, I'm going to start in that heart section of the, of the block because it's always best to quilt from the center out. So, I'm going to pick a point, let's say just at the top of the heart here. I'm gonna lower my presser foot. I'm gonna grab and hold my thread tail and use the needle up down button to lower the needle, bring it back up, and I'm going to pull a nice length of my bobbin thread out. When you're quilting, the best cleanest finish um, for your actual free motion or quilting designs um, is going to be burying these excess threads at your start and stop points. So leaving a nice long tail makes that easier when you go to finish. So now we can get started on quilting. If you're like me and find yourself as more of a novice free motion quilter, go back to month five of the Bernina Creative Studio and look at Nina's lesson on free motion fillers. She has a really great lesson to talk about, just some really easy, um, simple quilting motifs. Um, if this isn't uh, your strongest arena, she has some really great tips for you. So we're gonna get started and running the machine. You can see, even when I'm not moving the fabric, that needle is still going. And that is really great if you decide to do a motif that has sharper points to it, so that when you approach that point, the machine is still gonna stitch. You get really uh, crisp corners that way. 
So I'm just doing kind of a swirly design in here to fill my heart. And I'm gonna keep going and finish out this section and then we'll move on to quilting the bubble area around the heart. Now to quilt the next section here, the next color in our pieced block, I'm gonna switch over to mode two on the BSR. And in mode two, the difference here is that when I stop moving the fabric, the needle will actually stop moving as well. One instance where this can be really helpful is that if you're working on a design like stippling or meandering, if you find yourself in a spot where you need to pause and think about where you're gonna go next, you can stop moving your fabric and not have to worry about tons of teeny little stitches building up on top of each other. The foot will stop, it gives you a break to stop and think, and then you can keep going on your merry way. So. Let's get started quilting this next section. Again, I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread. So we have a nice thread tail here. And I think I'm just gonna do kind of a ribbony fill around uh, our little heart shape. So you can see that the machine is stopping and slowing as I am with this fabric. So I'm still going with my foot control, but the machine is not going because I'm not moving fabric. The machine's working with me as I s decide to take a moment to stop and think. So go ahead and fill this area of your quilt, quilting it however you like, and then we'll move on to the background. All right, now the last thing we need to do is quilt the background area. So since you've had a minute to play a little bit with both mode one and mode two for the background, pick whichever one you liked best and play with uh, something new, a new kind of motif maybe you haven't tried before. So um, because we're going through the background fabric, we can actually start our quilting off the raw edge of the fabric. That's one less thread for you to have to bury later. Um, and just go ahead and get started with uh, a fun, fun little fill here. Just doing kind of a figure eight pattern. big swirls. Just fill in all of that background fabric. So again, fill in your background and then we'll come back and square this up. All right, your mug rug is all quilted and that means it's time to square it up. So take a nice big ruler and we're just gonna trim away all that excess batting and backing fabric. So following the lines of your quilt block, just cut that down. I'm gonna move on to the next side and I'm gonna align my ruler so that I make sure that um, one of the lines on the ruler is matching the line I just cut so that we get a nice clean 90 degree angle here. If we need to trim off a teensy bit of this uh, border fabric on the block, then that is just fine. That's why we put borders on there. Be a little bit forgiving for this. All right, again, turning at 90 degrees and we're gonna do the same thing. So that we get that nice 90 degree angle. And one last time. 
And this one, I'm going to make sure that it aligns neatly on the opposite side as well. All right, this all trimmed up. The very last step is going to be to bind. And everybody has a little bit different method for this. Everybody has their preferred. So I'm gonna let you do whatever you like. I like a regular double fold binding, hand stitched, but finish up that raw edge. All right, with your mini all nice and bound neatly, it is ready to live on your desk or hang on your wall um, and bring a little bit of cheer into your sewing room. Thank you for joining me on this lesson of Bernina Creative Studio. For more lessons like these, visit your local Bernina dealer.